Another issue we have to get to, of course, is the big the, the news of yesterday afternoon, um, which actually really does say something about the president as well that we have to try and understand. After just 10 days on the job, White House I don't even was he sworn in? Was he cleared even? He was never cleared. White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci is gone. Mooch out. He was pushed out. The same day the new chief of staff, John Kelly, was sworn in, the Wall Street Journal reports citing two administration officials that shortly after taking the oath, the retired four-star general urged Scaramucci to resign in a one-on-one -on -one meeting in his new office. And two sources close to the president tell NBC News Scaramucci's profane remarks last week to the New Yorker disgusted and offended some of those close to the president. I thought those <laughs> close to the president wanted him in there. Does anyone yes, know who they pushed well, they, for Scaramucci? Oh, Jared and Ivanka. So this wasn't yet another okay, example because, of their sterling political Because this judgment. reporting says Melania and Ivanka Trump, who had initially advocated yep. for him, were a little upset at his language, like it was new information. Take a look. You said the president found his remarks inappropriate. Obviously, the president is not a stranger to salty language. Can you specify what exactly he found inappropriate or disturbing about that? I said he found it inappropriate for a person in that position. To do, to do what? I, I believe the, the comments that he made, he found those comments inappropriate. I'm not sure what's unclear. I don't think that it's complicated to understand that the president felt the comments were inappropriate. Uh, I can't really explain it any further than that. She can't explain it. She can't explain it because <laughs> this president has a hard time with what's inappropriate, right? How do you define right. what's inappropriate for this president? Right. I'm more wondering, though, about the inner circle who, who pushed for Scaramucci, who, you know, it's just let's leave that story aside for now because it's kind of sad. Well, if his, um, if his job was to push out Priebus and Spicer, mission accomplished. That leaves Steve Bannon to represent the establishment. Mm. Yeah. Um, Gene Robinson has a great calm on this, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Sanders also made it clear that all staff will report to General Kelly. So six months later, they finally get, they need a chief of staff that everybody gets in line behind, which could really help. You never know. I guess it's never too late to lose hope. Uh, even as late as Sunday evening, Scaramucci told MSNBC's Stephanie Rule that he believed the fallout from his New Yorker interview would blow over. But as the New York Times reports, quote, it was soon clear that Mr. Scaramucci would not be a fixture of the administration, but a transitory figure who created an opportunity for Mr. Trump with his daughter Ivanka and son-in-law Jared Kushner to undertake the far-reaching shakeup intended to purge the White House staff of leakers and aides viewed as not sufficiently loyal to his cause. And seemingly above the fray of it all, the president tweeted a great day at the White House. Do I understand that <laughs> to, to be them saying that they planned this? Because nobody plans to, uh, pr plans to bring in a colossal disaster, an unhinged Mack truck of a person to drive through the White House spewing profanity, and then to say, oh, we planned that, so then we can do the, uh, that's just, this no, is they they really? certainly didn't plan it, and it's more of their spin. And I, quite frankly, have really tired of the Jared and Ivanka spin machine that is constantly trying to portray them as somehow all powerful yet powerless. And they have so much control, yet they have no control and can't control anything so from this White House. So and I was also really disgusted by Ivanka's tweet yesterday saying that she looked forward to working alongside General Kelly. Alongside? Yeah. Respect the change of command in the White House. Respect someone who served for nearly half a century in the military. Maybe you could learn something. And that, you know, I've always been skeptical that anyone could rein in Donald Trump. Any chief of staff, Reince previously obviously couldn't do it. If anyone can do it, people have said it'll be General John Kelly, 40 years, four-star Marine general. But even he, yesterday was an important move by him, but even he will last only so long with Donald Trump. If there's the, Donald Trump doesn't do a chain of command. He is the chain of command. And if you think that Ivanka and Jared, Steve, aren't going to have a direct line to their father and their father-in-law, you're sorely mistaken. I hope General Kelly can do the job that a conventional chief of staff has always done. But it's just, I, I'll believe it when I see it with this president. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I think there's a couple things going on here. You've got the whole soap opera dynamic of it. If you put that aside for a minute, what you do have here is one thing that I think is sort of customary 
the White House, and that is you have a new chief of staff coming in who's saying, I want my own people and I want the authority. And there is, you go back to Ronald Reagan 30 years ago, the previous record for the shortest stint as communications director was eight days. I think this one went six. You had eight days under Reagan because you had the same sort of combination of soap opera where you had a, a new communications director was installed. Then you had a new chief of staff, Howard Baker, who came in because the old one was pushed out because Don Reagan and Nancy Reagan didn't get along. And the new chief of staff said, staff said you know what, this comms director, I don't want, I want a new one in here. So that was, that was why you had a previous record of eight days. And there is somewhat of a similar dynamic playing out with this one. Obviously, the soap opera dynamics are very different with this one. They go back much farther. They have longer term implications, I think, for this administration. But the thing at the core that we are seeing here is, I think, something we've seen before, which is a chief of staff asserting himself early on. And of course, it does raise a longer term question of what will his authority look like well, a month from now. And I, I actually am really surprised that there was a tweet that said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to work alongside. General Kelly, there's nobody's working alongside him. He's in charge. I guess he needs I, to be in charge. If you want your father administration but to succeed. If you want your father to stop drafting statements reportedly that will get him into potentially legal trouble, you know, the Washington Post obviously uh, breaking this story. One of the exact quote is: Prosecutors typically assume that any misleading statement is an effort to throw investigators off track. This is like putting breadcrumbs out for Mueller and saying, "Come this way. Here's a little trail for you of all the things that I'm going to do on my own, going rogue." with my family who has no experience and no ability to help me try and lead this country and instead we're just going to work on trying to get out of trouble that we have made. Literally put it on a plaque. It's unbelievable. They need someone in there to get all the people but, away from the president so he can focus on his job, Sam Stein, which right now, if you look at the what is it, 10 failures in a row, many of them legislative, many sure. of them political, some of them just morally embarrassing. It's time for the family to get out of the way. I mean, yeah. Willie is once again. I, I, once again, I agree with Willie. Which is like a <laughs> shock. You, Two times in less me? than 20 minutes. Finally, but, well, Sam. you too. I mean, if you guys are making the same point, which is how do you have an effective chain of command when you have family? Under the chain of command, there is just no way, a conceivable way, that Ivanka and Jared can take off their family hat, put on their professional hat, and report to John Kelly and, and not ever talk to their dad and their father-in-law in a non in a professional capacity. It just doesn't work that way. And this is part of what people were worried about when you hire family members for that type of gig. And again, also uh, the biggest enemy here for Trump is himself. I mean, yeah. so long as he can stop the tweeting and the erratic behavior, maybe he has a chance to succeed. But the truth. The matters, and we were reporting this out yesterday at the Daily Beast. You know, Kelly's already making entreaties to top Democrats on the Hill. We have sources in the White House who are really encouraging him to go for it in terms of trying to find a Democratic coalition, uh, a Democratic Republican coalition for things like tax reform. But, you know, Democrats feel like the well's poisoned a little bit here, that they can't really work with Trump. And the truth of the matter is that their base really doesn't want them to work with Trump, too, after what's been a very tumultuous six months. So right. I'm not entirely confident, having done reporting on this, that we're going to see some sort of showering, this blossoming of uh, bipartisan uh, fever no. on Capitol Democrats, Hill. but think of Republicans. Next hour, we have Republican Senator Jeff Flake of yeah. Arizona on the show. He has a new book out. In an excerpt published in Politico, Flake writes that the Republican Party is in denial about Donald Trump. And he writes in part this. It was we conservatives who, upon Obama's election, stated that our number one priority was not advancing a conservative policy agenda, but making Obama a one-term president. The corollary to this binary thinking being that his failure would be our success and the fortunes of the citizenry would, be, would pre presumably be sorted out in the meantime. It was we conservatives who were largely silent when the most egregious and sustained attacks on Obama's legitimacy were leveled by marginal figures who would later be embraced and legitimized by far too many of us. We conservatives have maintained an unnerving silence as instability has ensued to carry on in the spring of 2017 as if what was happening was anything approaching normalcy required a determined suspension of critical faculties and tremendous powers of denial. And uh, Jeff Flake will be our guest later on the show. Rick Teller, what do you think? 
I sort of want to say it's about time someone spoke up, but Jeff has been speaking up. And he, he has put been. it into uh, one thing. And I think it's interesting that he is in there. He's, um, he's assuming he's speaking for conservatives. And I think that's, I think that's good because conservatives, uh, in my mind, conservatives who are uh, adhering to principle and not just party label and, and, and what Trump calls winning, winning, winning. And my question as a conservative is if you win, what, what do we win? And I, I want to know what the policy advancements are when we win. We haven't had any. We, and so well, I'm, had I'm happy Supreme that. Court. Yes, but that wouldn't have happened without McConnell. And I hate to give him credit, but it wouldn't have happened. Right. Because he went nuclear on it. And so, Elise, what do Republicans walk the plank for for this president and this administration? We'll leave Kelly out of this conversation because he's so brand new, new and people have a lot of hope in him. But let's just think about the inner circle. This president and his inner circle, including his family, Kelly and Conway, Steve Bannon, why in the world? What would they want to accomplish by trying to, at this point, do anything for this administration? Well, and you look at how President Trump treats those who are most loyal to him. You know, it's been crazy over the last couple of weeks to watch Jeff Sessions of Alabama become a sympathetic figure who is suddenly this righteous arbiter of law and order to the left just because he has been so under attack by his former best friend and all-time supporter Donald Trump. So if that's the kind of treatment you can expect if you will not literally walk the plank for Donald Trump, then why make that risk and go in with him? Remember, there's a personal element to this Jeff Flake story, too. Donald Trump has yep. privately pledged to spend his own money, on he said, primary challenger. on the primary challenger to Jeff Flake. So, Jeff, as Rick said, Jeff Flake has been out there as a never-Trumper earlier on and all that. He has voted with him. He did vote for the Skinny repeal recently, so he hasn't been on the record with votes against Donald Trump. But there's also this fascinating personal layer, and I'm sure we'll ask him about it in about an hour or so when he comes on where Trump has come out and said, I will primary a Republican, a vote I desperately need in the Senate because I don't like the guy and he hasn't been nice to me. Wow. Okay. And again, we're going to have much more from Senator Flake when he joins us on set next hour. We'll all Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.